Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to talk about the top stacks on the board for week number nine. What's going on, Jim? Yeah, I'm pretty excited for this week nine slate, Greg, because it's back to the usual process where we stack games that we like, load up on some fun receivers. We've got running backs in each tier that we like. So I'm feeling pretty good about how this slate is is stacking up. And I think it's, you know, it's back to old reliable once again. It really is old reliable. Two weeks ago, we sat here and like, I like Russell Wilson, the parent with Tyler Lockett. Well, that makes sense. Uh, last week, you, you went with DK Metcalf. And I'm like, well, why are you changing? He goes, well, last week was a Lockett game. So now it's a Metcalf game. Well, in week number eight, we had that DK Metcalf explosion. So week nine, what do we do? We go back to Tyler Lockett. It's a, it's a very simple mathematical equation. Lockett, then Metcalf, then Lockett, then Metcalf. Russell Wilson to Tyler Lockett. That is the combination you're going with here on Sunday. Yeah, and I think that we've learned a lot about the Seahawks the past couple of weeks, Greg, in that they are willing to attack the opposing team's biggest weakness. So what you do is you look at the opposing team, see where they're weakest, and use that weakness uh, against them. And I think that this week that leads to Tyler Lockett, because this Bills defense biggest weakness is in the middle of the field. They've got Tredavious White. Tredavious White is a tremendous corner. He's going to get DK Metcalf. And Metcalf is good enough to beat anyone. And we saw glimpses of that against Arizona. You know, he didn't come through in that game, but he did have a touchdown call back. He would have been fine in that game. So you can still use DK Metcalf, despite the fact he is facing Tredavious White, but uh, we should also expect the Seahawks are going to attack this Bills defense where they are most exploitable. That's going to lead to a lot of Tyler Lockett. Lockett has had a bunch of targets this year. He had 20 in that game against Arizona. I am not expecting 20, but 15 would be okay. You know, no complaints that that does wind up happening. I think this is just a no-brainer best game on the board. Tyler Lockett gets his access to it at a lower salary than Stephon Diggs and DK Metcalf, and I won't complain about that. So I do think that this is a good Lockett week. I do not think that will sneak up on anyone. I would expect Lockett to be more popular than DK Metcalf. And again, you can use Metcalf in tournaments too, but if you're going here for cash games or a single entry tournament i'm gonna to go tyler lockett and just take the path of least resistance here let's be smart about this you know a combination is going to work you know seattle's going to attack a weakness tyler lockett in store for another big game russell wilson continues his march toward the mvp the seahawks stack an obvious but correct call for this week Let's go to something a little bit less obvious, right? And I think that's the Buffalo Bills, specifically Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs, which really worked well the first couple of weeks of the season. And then they hit a few road bumps. I know the schedule got a bit tougher. The injuries uh, grew for this Buffalo team. But this combination hasn't been as lethal as it has been. Now, we talked to Tom Vecchio earlier this week. He really likes Stephon Diggs. Why is everybody back in on the Bills here in Week 9? Yeah, I think it's important to remember context, Greg. And what I mean by context is... Did Josh Allen meet expectations in those games? And I think that he relatively did because there were a couple of bad weather games. There were some tough matchups in there. And that Jets game, you know, they didn't put up points, but they moved the ball. They got in the red zone like 83 times. They just couldn't score in that game. So he probably fell short of expectations there. But in the other games, we didn't really expect that much from Josh Allen. But we've expected big things out of Josh Allen. He has come through. He's had 25 FanDuel points in each of those games, each of his first four games. He had 30 points in two of those. So I'm expecting Josh Allen to bounce back, which in turn, in turn means I expect Stephon Diggs to bounce back. If we look at the games where John Brown has been healthy because John Brown did get in a full practice on Thursday this week, Diggs has 29% of the team's overall targets and is averaging 2.5 deep targets per game. That is an amazing workload against a Seattle defense that is very, very, very beatable by outside wide receivers. So Stephon Diggs, I think, is a tremendous cash game play. He is a great tournament play, too, and the logical stacking partner for Josh Allen. Because Josh Allen checks so many boxes at quarterback, he is He's at home. He's facing a bad defense. He's in a projected tight scripts, logical stacking partner, and he has rushing. I think Josh Allen is the top quarterback on this slate. If I have just one single tournament entry, I'm going Josh Allen by a hair over Russell Wilson. I think both those guys are the top two guys in the slate, but I want Josh Allen number one, Russ number two. And when I do go Josh Allen, I'm stacking him with Stephon Diggs most of the time, but I do think that John Brown is also in play at $5,500. With John Brown back healthy, he could be vital to the Bills' success this weekend. But Stephon Diggs, obviously the favorite target thus far this year for Josh Allen. If Josh Allen can get back on track, Stephon Diggs will get back on track. And your DFS lineup will look really, really nice with that combination of Allen and Diggs on Sunday. 
Perhaps the favorite player on the slate for Tom Vecchio, as we spoke about earlier this week, was Justin Herbert. And he loves this game uh, with the Charger in it. He expects a big uh, output here for Los Angeles in this game. And, and pairing Justin Herbert with Keenan Allen, well, it makes a whole lot of sense. Since Justin Herbert entered the lineup, Keenan Allen has been reinvigorated. And hopefully they can put up quite a few points here on Sunday. Yeah, I agree with Tom. This is a really fun game to stack, too. And I think it's my number two on the slate behind Buffalo against Seattle. A good pivot if you don't want to swallow the chalk with that game, which I am inclined to do personally. But I understand if you don't want to uh, want to go with Herbert instead. And Herbert has a lot of the same things we like about Josh Allen. He can run a little bit. He's facing a really bad defense. He is at home. He's also indoors, which does not hurt. So... I think that bodes really well for Justin Herbert. I also think what bodes well is we've seen the Chargers showing a lot of faith in Justin Herbert so far this year. They have played three games this year with Herbert, Mike Williams, and Keenan Allen all healthy. They have thrown the ball 56% of the time on early downs in the first half in those three games. That's compared to 50% in the other four games they've played so far this year. So when they've had these pieces healthy... They've been willing to let Justin Herbert open things up, which means that we can get a good floor and a good ceiling out of Justin Herbert. Herbert's efficiency has been awesome this year. That's despite facing a lot of tough matchups. He has had four different games against top 12 pass defenses. He's had three against top 10 pass defenses and just one against a defense ranked outside the top 20. He will get number two this week against the Raiders. So Herbert, I think, is a nice way to save some salary. It's any $900. And like you said, it's just Keenan Allen. He's kind of like the Stephon Diggs here where you know where to go when you're stacking this team. Allen, 30% of the targets in, the, in that aforementioned split with Mike Williams and Justin Herbert. And his salary is right between Stephon Diggs and Tyler Lockett. So that's not going to make Keenan Allen be contrarian by any means, but it will at least put a cap and a ceiling on his roster rates and tournaments. I think that's a really attractive thing. So if you want to pivot a bit off of that Seattle uh, Buffalo game, I think this is the best place to go. You lock in Justin Herbert with Keenan Allen, run it back with Darren Waller at tight end. And I think you'll be setting yourself up to have a lot of fun if that game does what it could do and shoots out. Raiders and Chargers in the AFC West could be a fun game. Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, two of the mainstays that are going to be in our lineup potentially this weekend uh, for the Chargers. One of uh, several games you could stack. If you're not going with Russell Wilson and Josh Allen, well, Justin Herbert's a fun one. And there's just going to be a lot of points here. There's just not much defense. The Chargers are getting rid of defenders. I like this game as well. It's going to be a fun Sunday here in Week 9. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. We've given you the stacks, the top values on the boards. We've given you the top stars, and Megan Nunez gave you her favorite picks of the week. Jim, we appreciate the time. Good luck this week. Thank you, Greg. Enjoy week nine, and we'll talk to you again on Monday to wrap it all up. That's right. Back here on Monday, Jim and I will go over the players whose stocks are rising after the end of the week. For Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the games, and we'll see you back here on Monday for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.